Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we are working on a Cub Cadet SLX 50. It's not about the tractor, it's about the engine. This came in with a, like it was half half power. Person said, uh, yeah, it's not cutting very well, doesn't sound very good. And uh, I'm going to show you right now on what it sounds like. And for you guys to hear it out there, going to have to idle it down and throttle it up. Now, this is only running on one cylinder. This is a 7000 series. This is a KT735 twin cylinder Kohler engine. And uh, pretty much for the most part, these engines have been pretty good. And I like them. This one has 671 hours on it. So it definitely has some use on it. I'm going to go ahead and start it and listen to this. Now I'm going to put a clip in that shows what it's supposed to sound like. This is what it should sound like. Okay, so let's show you the tools needed today. Okay, so the tools we're going to use today, uh, I'm replacing both the ignition coils. Here is the OEM part number 32-584-06-S. Now this is for the KT735 engine. Uh, just make sure you look it up for your exact model engine. I don't know if they're all the same or not um, from the whole K7000 series or not. This is also the air gap in millimeters and in inches. So it's 0 0.203 to 0 0.305 metric and then the uh, 08 to 12 thousandths inch. I'm going to use my electric quarter inch ratchet that I always use. This is the two inline spark testers I'm going to use, but I like to use these and they work 99% of the time. They're fine. The, you, you're going to need a, either a piece of plastic. Back in the day, we used to use the cardboard boxes to actually make the air gap because you can sometimes, you mic these out and you find out how thick these are, but this one actually, believe it or not, is too thick. Um, so this is only a 10 thousandths. Uh, gap air gap piece of plastic that I'm using to, to put the air gap in there on the coil We're gonna go ahead and put two new spark plugs in because obviously if you're doing ignition coils You want to do the spark plugs too. It's like a tune-up thing and I use the NGK CS6 and that's equivalent to a champion RC 12 YC We have a spark plug socket, which is 5 8 3 8 extension with a 3 8 ratchet or a quarter inch will work too and then I have a deep eight millimeter and a shallow eight millimeter socket they're quarter inch and a 10 millimeter quarter inch socket so let's get to it i'm going to go ahead and take the hood off which is basically just a plug for the headlights and we're just going to pull this up out of the way what you want to do is you want to get your spark testers i try to use two everybody has their thoughts on their spark testers they use i've been using this inline spark tester for a long time there's a couple different ways you can check the easiest way is if you have a spark tester, just use a spark tester on each side. This is an inline one, inline spark tester. So you just plug it into the spark plug, the other end into the ignition coil. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Also, since we ran this, if you have a down cylinder, a real easy way to check would be to just touch. You can either touch the valve cover or you can touch the exhaust pipe. And as long as you haven't run it, and you gotta be very careful, you can burn yourself on the exhaust, but I can already tell that sitting on a tractor, this would be your right one. The exhaust on the right one is definitely hot. The exhaust on the left one, I can hold my hand on it and it's fine. So I can already tell that this one here, we have no, no ignition, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you with the spark testers. Now I'm gonna get on it and start it up. And we'll have the uh, camera look at both of them and we'll see which one's flashing and which one's not. Okay, just like I suspected, the left cylinder is down. Now, you could have other issues, but right now we have spark issue. We 100% know that we have an ignition problem. The first thing you would do is take out your spark plug, 
take your spark plug out is a 5 8 deep socket or a 5 8 spark plug socket. And sometimes I have seen that engines that get older and have a lot of hours on them, every now and then you'll have a bad spark plug. And this one here, you can, already, you can tell that we just ran it and it's got fuel sitting on the side. I don't know if you can see it or not. But what you want to look for is in between the gap, you want to see if there's any carbon that has actually formed. Sometimes carbon will form between the gap and the electrode right there and it will shut the engine off because it's grounded out. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to install a new spark plug and see if this fixes it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my, I use the NGK CS6. It's a pre-gap 30,000 spark plug. Well, I'll see it, I guess. Now let's see if it works. Put the ignition tester back on it. Okay, it was not the spark plug. So we're going to go ahead and start taking this apart and replace the ignition coil. First, you want to take the air cleaner off, which is just turning your cover arms this way. Straight out, brings it right up. I always recommend if you're going to do ignition coils, depending on the machine, we're actually going to do both of these. You may not want to do both of them, but I just want to make sure that we're starting fresh at 670 some hours. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides of the coils. Okay, starting up front on this cowling, we have one, two, three, eight millimeter socket. We'll take out these bolts. You have to be careful putting these back in. These are threaded for plastic. You don't want to over tighten these or they will strip very easily. You also have the fuel pump that must be set off to the side and that is a 10 millimeter socket that will take the fuel pump down, two bolts. And again, these are also screwed into plastic. So you have to be very careful when you put them back in. It's an eight millimeter socket that'll take the two back off here. I'm not sure if these have to come all the way out. Oh, I feel a slot. These might not have to come all the way out. I'm gonna leave this in here. This side over here. Just gonna let that side to the side. Okay, they didn't have to come out all the way, which is good. Take off your cowing here. And I can tell what happened right here. If you look at the, if you look at the ignition coil, you can see that somebody had this housing off and it pinched it between the wire. And actually you can see burn mark right here. So this was grounding and it pinched it pretty good to the point where you see the wire. Wow, okay. So somebody had this off at some point and uh, maybe they were cleaning mice out or something, but I don't see any remnants of mice. But it's, you see this little concave area right here? This is where the, the wire should be. The wire should be right there. Let's go around, uh, well, yeah, okay. So that would do it, and it was grounding out, so it wasn't running, and it pretty it's pretty messed up. It's cut it's cut a couple different places here. And it's flat. It looks like it's been sitting riding there for a while. Hmm. Okay, now you do have uh, a couple things to get around. This is, uh, I think this is the automatic choke. You have a wire right here that's a ground wire to the coil, which needs to be make sure you re-plug these in when you're when you put the new one in. And you have an air gap that I'm gonna show you, but it's uh the air gap should be between, I forget the metric because I'm standard, but it's supposed to be between, I think eight and 12 thousandths right here. And in the, what you do is the magnet right here is where you wanna have your gap. So you, you spin your flywheel around until the magnet is right in front of your coil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the coil on and we're gonna have it all the way out. We're gonna tighten it up. Then we're gonna move the, now this is a magnet, so we're not gonna get it close to it now, but then we're gonna bring the magnet around and then loosen these two up. It'll slide to the, with the, uh, I use a piece of plastic that's, I think it's 10 thousandths, and you put it in here, and then you slide it together, tighten it up, slide the plastic out, and then you have your gap. Okay, so we're gonna take these two bolts out. It's a eight millimeter socket. And I would suggest moving the, moving the magnet away from the coil because it will, uh, try to get sucked into it because it's magnetic. 
and then it'll just be hard to get the coil out. Make sure you take off your ground wire. I'm gonna pull these guys straight up and out. And say so there's one coil. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do both. So I'm gonna take off both sides and uh, we'll be right back with putting this side back in. Okay, I have the new coil. I already, as you can see over here, this is the brand new coil on this side. There's no reason to show you both sides. So we're just gonna do this side over here. It probably would have been a little bit easier to show you guys on the inner side, but just get your coil on there. Make sure that you're, you have the, this is your ground wire right here. I'm gonna bend it up just a tick. Um, ground wire needs to be right, right here. So you, as far as knowing if it goes upside down or not, it's right side up when your ground wire is facing up. So remember that when you put the coil on. Be careful of this arm. It's very, uh, very flexible right there, but you don't want to break it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these down. Right before you get to the tight part, I'm going to pull the coil out away from the flywheel as far as I can and then tighten it. Then we're going to bring the magnet around and I usually try to line the magnet up as even as I can. Then I'm gonna take my piece of plastic that is about 10 thousandths thickness. I'm gonna put it between the coil and the magnet. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the ignition coil mounting hardware. Push it in. And you kinda of have to hold it, hold it in while you're tightening it on. Just give it a nice snug. Make sure they're tight. There probably is a torque spec for this. As long as I've been doing this for 30 plus years, I've never needed it and it worked out just fine. I'll try to look up the torque spec for these bolts and if I find it, I'll put it in a, right here. Then you push it, push the magnet away so you can get your piece of plastic or whatever you're using to make the gap. Okay. I already have a new spark plug on this side. When you, we, when you route the wire, make sure you don't do what happened here. You're just gonna go right here where a nice little curve is. That's made for that. And then you put your spark plug in. Now you could use a little bit of a dielectric grease on the end of that spark plug, that helps. Put that in like that. And you have to put your cowling back on. Engine cover. And just double check to make sure it's in the right spot, which it is. It should actually go. It's a fine line if you move it just a little bit and it's out of the way. Just make sure it's down. Make sure the other one was down. The other one's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the three up top here. And like I said, be very careful when you put these in. Fuel pump. The one over here has a, this has a, a little arm that comes off the bolt that holds the throttle cable. Just try to make sure it was right around the same place as the other one. cleaner back on make sure your tabs are facing outward when you put the cover on and then it'll lock in like that let's go ahead and give her a shot okay so let's fire it up and see what it sounds like
Well, there you go. It sounds much better. There's a little bit of popping and missing on the top end of that, and that's probably from all the fuel that has accumulated that was not fired and burned. Um, so it may take a little bit to clear it out, but that's pretty much it, and uh, it sounds real good. So that pretty much sums it up for how to install and diagnose a ignition coil going bad on a Kohler 7000 series engine. Now this will go for pretty much all the twin cylinder 7000 series engines as far as the diagnosing goes. And yes, it could have been something different. Luckily it was just an ignition coil and it wasn't internal. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.